What's up guys, Intellitech Studios here, and today we're going to be doing the quick acquisition video of the Dyson DC41 Animal Complete. So I just got this vacuum pretty recently from Vacuum Zen Carb Cleaner Guy. I got this for $60, and he also included a good amount of goodies with it, which is really nice. So I actually got a brush roll for my Eureka 4870, a brush roll for my Bissell 6594, as well as two Hoover attachments, an extension wand and a dusting brush, and a few replacement vacuum cords alongside this machine. So, I got this machine just a couple days ago, and I already did a little bit of work to it. The only thing that I did so far is I actually pulled apart this brush roll housing, and pulled apart this brush roll housing and made it a little bit more... Uh, clean than it was before. There was a lot of hair stuck in the spindles where the brush rolls actually attached as well as a little bit of in the side of the bearings on the ends of the brush roll. So I greased up the side bearings, did the best I could to clean out the middle bearings, uh, clean the thing up somewhat. I didn't obviously like polish the inside of it. You can tell it's still pretty cloudy and a little bit, a little bit dusty, but I did do an actual repair on the thing. And, um, so that's pretty okay. And there's no other work that I did to the machine. The only thing I did is I did check the filters. So in case you're wondering, we'll check those right now. So popping off the bin right here and opening this up. Pre-motor filter looks perfectly fine. No real issues with that. Honestly, it looks brand new. It looks very clean. see right there pretty decently clean looks good not too bad on the inside of it so the inside of the cyclones look pretty good too outside of the cyclones a little bit dusty I need to clean that up but that's no big deal so that pops right back in there no problem one thing that's a bit funky about this is the uh, this was a little bit funky you can see how that how kind of pushes there like that and you gotta kinda push this button to get it to line back up again. So, this little mechanism is a little bit flimsy. And that's just, appears to be just a really bad design for this particular Dyson. You can tell all these separated little plastic pieces, you know, not exactly anything super strong and durable. But the actual bin looks good. You can tell. The seal is pretty okay. It needs a clean, but it's not. The seal's not busted like it is on a lot of these where it doesn't seal properly. This one doesn't seem to have that problem. You can see right there, a little, a little bit dusty right there. That's nothing that can clean, can't clean up. It does have the bracket and the combination tool. It's missing the upholstery tool. And of course, it's missing all the external attachments like the Tangle Free Turbine and all that stuff, but I can probably get that pretty easily. I actually have all of the attachments that have this fitting. The only exception is I don't have a floor tool that has that fitting, and I don't have the Tangle Free Turbine. I don't have any turbine tool that has this connector on it. You can tell, for example, this angle brush, this, this actually is one for an older one, but I do have another one of these that has the proper connector for this. But yeah. Of course it says right there, important, wash filter every three months. There's the serial number information, DC41. This one was manufactured on the 25th week of 2013. So we can see that right there. Plenty of patents and whatnot. Of course, bin just pops right on, just like that. This button doesn't like to click back into place. You gotta kind of wiggle it a little bit to get that to click in. I did register this on my Dyson account. It is still under warranty. In fact, the warranty just started. Previous owner, whoever had it before Marco had it, and Marco himself, didn't actually register this. So, it is registered to me. My warranty just started on this, despite this being made in 2013. I know some people were like, oh no, this is out of warranty. Nope, I did not. I registered it just now. And it does say that it's still within warranty. It says that my warranty just started. So either this is under warranty 
and they're just activating it because I'm the first person to register it. Or the website is lying to me, and this is actually not under warranty, and if I try to call Dyson to get any part replaced, they're going to tell me to, you know, to beat it. So, we'll see how well this thing does. So, looking at the cord, cord's in good shape, a little bit dusty, needs a bit cleaned. Wand looks okay. Brand new hose, that is one thing that is really nice. It is an aftermarket hose, but it is a brand new hose. So this thing actually does have a brand new hose. Unfortunately, since it is aftermarket, this part doesn't swivel correctly. But it's a brand new hose. And the other thing is that the wand actually sits in the handle properly, unlike... You, you can tell that hose is still nice and clear. So that's nice. Look at that. Beautiful. So, there's one thing, is that the... The hose that... The, or I should say the... Uh, the wand, I have a bunch of these new Dysons. I have, I had the DC-65, Marco has that now. But as far as the Dysons I still own, I have the Kinetic, I have the Dyson Slimball, and actually that's it. And then I have this now. And this one, the wand comes off the smoothest. The wand actually just pops off the way it's supposed to. It doesn't get stuck like a lot of the other ones do. So, that's a nice... One thing, though, is that this does have a lot more play in the housing than the newer ball Dysons, from what I can tell. So, yeah, pulling this, oops, pulling this down on its side to look at this filter. So we're going to pull off this filter real quick and look at this, see how well this looks. See if this needs replaced. Obviously, the pre-motor filter is just fine. Doesn't need replaced on that. Let's see how this is doing. Nope, it's not off all the way. It'll make it very obvious when this is actually disconnected. Oh, kind of hard to get with one hand. Set this down real quick. Well, real quick. There we go. Okay. That's off now. We can see the inside of this. A little bit discolored. Hopefully it still gets good airflow through it. If not, I'm going to have to change that. We'll see. Inside of this looks fine. A little bit of dust. Nothing too major. There's really... There's no debris in here. There's nothing other than carbon dust. So... This machine looks like it was well taken care of. It's like a little latch right there. It's kind of... Keeps it in place. And then, of course... This, this goes back on. Glad how, despite this looking relatively complicated, getting to this filter is actually rather simple. I don't think it's as simple as with the 25 and the 33 and the 28 and all that. But it's pretty solid. Once it does the clicking like that, you know it's in place all the way. It's kind of just like your gas cap on your car. So... Looking at the lower hose. Oh, is that a tape on it? Oh, it does. Okay. So I'm going to have to change this lower hose. Hopefully that's an easy fix. Oh, I didn't notice that. I didn't know that was a problem. That explains why the suction on this is a little bit weaker than what I'm usually used to from a modern Dyson. But I'm not complaining. I actually think reduced tool suction on a Dyson is a blessing. It's one of the things I actually like about the Phantoms is that while they don't have very good tool suction, they have they don't have too much tool suction. It's just enough to pick up hair and crumbs and all that, but it's not so much that it sticks to anything you're trying to vacuum. And of course, I need to get a pulser tool for this anyways. But, so with that in mind, we'll go ahead and see how this runs.
<laughs> right there when I turned it off, you could see how problematic these pedal releases are on these. Because after a while, they'll get to the point where the locking mechanism isn't as strong, and then if you don't push it forward hard enough, it'll not click properly and then fall back. Definitely something that they've addressed on newer machines, I believe. But not so much on this one. This is the first generation of this modern ball design, after all. So there's going to be some kinks and bugs in this design. And there definitely is, to say the least. But regardless, one thing I will say is that I've heard from so many people the 41 is a horrible machine. It cleans badly. It does such a poor job. The newer ball Animal 2s and everything are just so much better. And that latter statement may still be true, but as far as this performance being awful, I've even heard some people say that, oh, the 14 and all that clean better than the 41. I don't know how much I buy that, because I can feel this thing agitating the carpet a lot more than I did on the 14 or on the 07 or anything like that. And, and granted, the 14 is really the only comparison I can really say, because that one I just put a new clutch in, and it has a good brush roll and everything in it, and it still does not agitate as well as this. So, I mean, I, I don't feel like this agitates as well as the 28, but that I also haven't used the 28 in a while. I haven't used it since a couple days after I got it. So maybe I need to use these the both of them side by side and see how well. Maybe this does still perform better than the 28, or maybe it's so close that the newer Ball Animal 2s actually do perform better than the 28. I'm not sure. And obviously the 27 and the 17 would generally also fit in those categories, but I don't have either of those machines to test at the moment. Um, but another Dyson added to the collection. I don't really see any reason to get rid of this. Maybe if I get a Ball Animal 2 in the future that's just the upgraded version of this, maybe I'll sell this, but probably not, because honestly, there's, you know, something kind of charming about it. It's Dyson's, you know, first vacuum with this design, and, um, it's kind of good for comparison's sake, because I'm definitely going to hold on to this at least until I get a Ball Animal 2, because this is the DC-41 animal, this is essentially three generations before the Ball Animal 2. Because there's the 41 animal, then there's this was replaced by the 65 animal, or in the UK, the 41 Mark II. And then that was, well, okay, that's all the time I'm going to mention the UK, now I'm just going to focus on US. Then in the US, this was replaced with the 65, like I just mentioned. Then it was the original Ball Animal, which was very similar to the 65 and then the Ball Animal 2, which is the current Dyson flagship. Uh, the Kinetic, I'm not really going to count because the Kinetic has the same cleaner head as the Ball Animal 2. It's essentially the exact same machine, only with a bigger ball, bigger motor, and a different cyclone pack. Um, and no pre-motor filter as a result of that cyclone pack. So I'd still put the Kinetic in the same vein as the Ball Animal 2. Even though I think the Kinetic did come out before the Ball Animal 2. Because the Ball Animal 2 essentially replaced the Kinetic, even though they still sell the Kinetic. But, um, because I know some people keep thinking, oh, no, the Kinetic's been discontinued years ago. No, 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 you can still go on Dyson's website and buy Kinetic's brand new. for And from Best Buy as well. I went to Best Buy, and in both cases, you can get a brand new Kinetic uh, Silver Animal Plus Allergy with a crap ton of attachments for $700. So, this, I believe this one was six fifty when this first came out, the Animal Complete. Because the Animal Complete is the one with the pink cyclone, the Animal's the one with the classic Dyson purple cyclone. But I do like the pink color on this, and it, also it's nice because if I get a ball animal too, I'll be able to tell the difference just by looking at them, which one's which. The only other difference you can really tell based on the looks is that this one has a black brush roll, whereas the uh, ball animal 2s have a purple brush roll, if I remember correctly. And then I think the multi-floor has a silver brush roll with yellow bristles, I think. Something to that effect. But um, I could be a little bit off on that. But either way, you can still tell the difference, assuming the cleaner head has been replaced. And the nice thing is, even if you do hate this cleaner head, if you have a 41 and you like it, and the only reason you're considering getting a replacement is because of the improved performance on the Ball Animal 2, just get the Ball Animal 2's cleaner head and put it on your 41. It just pops on really easily, and it'll get you all the performance of it. The only difference is, like, the Cyclone's, like, a little bit, Im like, slightly improved on the Ball Animal 2 from what I've heard. But I don't really see how that would make a big difference. But anyways, um, some of that is kind of speculation because this this is the only, other than the Kinetic, as far as the normal lineup with the actual pre-motor filter and all that, this is the first modern ball Dyson that I've had. I've never had a multi-floor. I've never had, or no, I guess I have the Slim Ball. 
But the Slim Ball isn't really in the same category because it's a smaller vacuum with a smaller bin and a much shorter cord. Um, but that machine does perform very well. So let's see what let's look at what this see what this thing got. Um, I know there was some scent beads in here already. But let's see what this thing actually pulled up. So I gotta admit that's. Uh, all right, shake, shake, shake. I have to admit, that really is not bad. Because this was just a living room and then part of the office. And also this one actually latches correctly. This was just a living room and part of the office. And literally, it got all that. Now, I obviously ignore the scent beads. Those were already there because Marco sucked up some scent beads in this before he sent it over. So it'd have a nice smell to it. And the scent beads do have a smell. I can smell them now. But you can see, I don't want to touch any of this because I don't like touching dirt. But you can see, like, there's, of course, there's some string and stuff that I sucked up that I pulled off of the brush roll. But other than that, a good amount of hair. And there's a little bit of fine dust and grit, but there's not a lot. It is, Dyson's generally aren't the best at fine dust removal. They generally generally will do better. And I I think that actually is the one scenario where the, or the one uh, specific reason why the newer cleaner heads on the newer units clean better, because I do remember using the Slim Ball at my dad's the other day, and it pulled out a lot of fine dust. Although, I'm not sure if that's because, because obviously I didn't bring that machine over here and run it after this 41. So I don't know if that's because the 41 is worse in removing fine dust than, than the newer machines, or if that's just because this is brand new carpet that's been cleaned every day since I got it, there's probably not going to be that much fine dust that's built up, whereas my dad's house hadn't been vacuumed in a good few days, a few weeks actually. So other than with the V8, with the V7, I mean, um, you know, in between vacuuming with the power force. So I don't know if that's just the reason, but if I do get a Ball Animal 2, I will try to do my best to actually compare these two side by side in performance and see if there actually is a substantial difference between the two because I've heard I've heard it repeated a lot online that these clean horribly and the Ball Animal 2s clean so much better, but that's something I want to quantify myself. I will say though, considering the the issues that this brush roll and brush roll motor have, first off, I noticed that the noise that this was making isn't too bad anymore. Uh, which I before I did this video, I recorded another video of me actually working on this brush roll, and I may upload that after this at some point. So in that video, you'll see this probably be making some noise um, after I pull it apart and put it back together. But I, I just vacuumed with that brand new Hoover, and again, other than the scent beads, because we're just talking about the hair and stuff, this got up all that hair. So maybe a little bit was in there before from the last time I used it. But, because I believe just this little bit was. I don't believe this whole clump of hair was in there before. So, if that's the case, that's pretty good. Like, I really can't complain about that. Because that's running it after a brand new vacuum that just came out of the box. Literally, the box is right there. And if this is still picking up a good amount of stuff in a small, what, 10 by, 10 by 15 area, maybe, if that... Uh, yeah, probably like a 10 by 15 area, give or take. I mean, sure, that's not, that's not a, you know, a bin full, but like, I wouldn't expect there to be a bin full of stuff. If so, that'd be, that'd look very abysmal on the part of that brand new Hoover. But I don't know. That's kind of making me think, like, should I start dailying this thing? Should I, should this become my new main vacuum? Since I've been trying to find a replacement for the Sanitaire and the SIBO's not really making the cut? I don't know. Because I really don't want to use bagless, but you know, as long as I, as long as I'm careful when I'm emptying it, it's not a big deal. And uh, if there is a bagless vacuum to use, it would be a Dyson because it's a sealed HEPA system. Same thing with a Shark, most Sharks at least, and most Dysons. But yeah, then of course I got to do the jiggle thing to get the latch back in. But yeah, I mean. I mean, I'm not complaining about that. That's that's pretty solid. So, I'll once I return this Hoover because I've pretty much already decided that I'm going to return that Hoover. 
um, which I'll return it after I do the full review, I might start using this machine more often. Because I know I have I know I have an upholstery tool that I can just snap on here without having to actually buy another one. I can just steal the one off my kinetic. But yeah, so maybe I'll use this thing more. What do you guys think? Should I start using the 41 more and do a more thorough test on it? Is this a is this a poorly misunderstood Dyson? Did I just get lucky and get like the one good one and all these are dead now and you know, even mine's not perfect obviously. Even mine still has some issues. Is that just is that evidence that all these are not worth it because they're going to fall apart? I don't know. Should I chance it anyway since the thing's under warranty so who cares if it breaks? I don't know. But regardless, this has been the acquisition video of the Dyson DC41 Animal Complete and uh, from 2013. We're going to go ahead and clean up this mess, and then we'll sign out. So this is Intelltech Studios signing out. Have a good one. Peace. Now it's making that noise again. So the brush roll noise that I commented on is still happening, so now i got to pull this thing apart again and clean out the brush roll again. And, um, other than that... Ugh. This thing really does bend too much, I will say that. This thing flexes way too much. There, wait, I'm going to put it like that, you can see how much this flexes. Probably gonna break it. But yeah.